Hey guys, Abner Miranda here. In the last couple of years, I've been taking this GS-17 to various rifle classes. And what I found in that time is that not only was it, when I initially started doing it, I kept thinking, well, you know, let me try it to see if it's a good idea. Not only is it a good idea, it's a brilliant idea. Right. This weapon excels at vehicle work. It excels at CQC work. It even excels at distances that one would consider, uh, well, your, your typical CQC people refer to as I've heard 50 yards and in to 25 yards and in. This weapon actually will handle those distances at 75 yards. Yeah. If you, but if you consider that 75 yards is a tactical fantasy, guys. Even if it, even if you're talking law enforcement and military, it's a tactical fantasy. Yeah, I know there are the thousand yard shots. I get that. But what I'm talking about is the fighting that we're seeing the world over now is building to building, room to room, um, very short. Uh, distances between uh, enemies. Counterinsurgency is what this weapon is about. I know that that's a, a phrase that here in America we have yet to want to embrace. I don't really know why because that's where we are now. What do you think an active killer is? An active killer is counterinsurgency. The only difference is active killer always comes across as fish in a barrel because America refuses to wake up to the problem. The problem is there aren't enough guns in society being carried by the good guys. Uh, whoops, some of you guys thought I was going somewhere else. There aren't enough guns in society being carried by the good guys. Society in America has not supported the good guys enough to the level to say, we are gonna trust that the good guys are gonna do good things with those guns rather than act like knuckleheads, which is what the criminals are doing with guns. That's a discussion for another day. The GS-17 was specifically designed for that environment. I wanted a weapon that did not require batteries. The RMR08G runs on fiber optics. It's got a 12.9 MOA Delta that I know some of you are thinking, but that's huge. Yeah, but at this distance, which is well over 30 feet, that target down there, the dot on him, and by the way, that is an exact one-to-one -one amalgam of a human being. This 12.9 this, uh, MOA triangle is really the size of essentially just a skosh underneath my thumbnail and above. So basically, that space right there is the size of a 12.9 MOA Delta. Do you, I hope you're understanding what I'm getting at. You can hit that guy in the eye, you can hit him in the nose, you can put a shot right through the mouth, you can go right through the Adam's apple, you can switch this guy off. I always say, this is the command center, this is the machinery. How do we disconnect the command center from the machinery? We destroy the communication lines. Hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical. Right, hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical. How do we disrupt a machine? How do we disrupt a vehicle? Hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical. Same thing with the human body. Hydraulic, blood, pneumatic, our breathing, electrical, the brain stem. If you shoot this area right here, which is above body armor, you can wreck the human body's ability to wage war. That's right, your mother. One of the things that this weapon really excels at is working from cover. When I went to Tactical Defense Institute in West Union, Ohio, one of the things that was taught, and I can't really show you that technique because it's a proprietary technique, um, was, was how to work a corner. And I can only leave it at that. You set up on that corner, and one of the things that I always found irritating was, has nothing to do with TDI, but I always found that I was having to work the muzzle of my weapon around that barrier, around that corner to get my shot. But what I find with this weapon is I can actually remain pretty much muzzle up already on that weapon. And when I get a shot on this guy, I'm looking at him pretty much dead center. Every one of those shots was about right there. That's exactly where I was looking. Was I really aiming? I don't really have to. If I want to aim, let's say, off to his left shoulder. Okay, right there. That is a very precise shot on this guy. I was able to tell you where I was gonna hit him and I was able to hit exactly where I was saying I was gonna hit him and I wasn't stabilizing because I can't stabilize on this stuff. So that just goes to show you that the ability of this weapon to get clean, precise shots is, is there. 
in a hurry. The other question that I have is, am I gonna get hit in the face? You'll notice I've been shooting it collapsed. Am I gonna get hit in the face while shooting collapsed? And the answer to that is, no. It doesn't matter how fast you shoot, as long as you've got that weapon pushed into your shoulder, it's not gonna become an issue. And yes, this is a short-barreled rifle. I get that. I will leave you with this. There's gonna come a time in this nation, I pray to God that it comes, where our lawmakers are gonna get ahead of the problem. They're gonna say, our people need the ability to defend themselves. And this is finally gonna become legal. Or, I pray to God that this doesn't happen. There's gonna come a time in this nation where chaos is gonna reign so bad, it's gonna get out of control so fast that this is going to be a viable weapon because it's all gonna to go to hell in a handbasket. Either way, this is going to be a viable weapon. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one. He's gonna, oh, he didn't fall, good. Your mother! Everybody's been decaffeinated.